Cheers! There's new probiotic beer! Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. This is Good News Next Week, episode 50-something for the week of July 10th, 2017. Just back from a summer's day run and out here on the summertime urban balcony. Hope you're doing well and safe and sound wherever you are this summer as we look at solutions-oriented stories. We often talk about a lot of bad news in the media monarchy kingdom, but hopefully we can lean more towards solutions-oriented stories. And like our buddy James Corbett said a couple of years ago, move from conspiracy to community. So let's begin actually with an update from a story we covered previously on Good News Next Week, and that was about fighting for your right to repair. A little bit of update from the U.S. Patent Office. They are completely tired of having to deal with all of the renewals and referrals that come from people begging for the right to be able to repair things that they legally own themselves. The U.S. government wants to permanently legalize the right to repair. And that is some good news via our friends at Blacklisted News. Doug Owen is awesome, and he's been at it for a long time. And I love to see people that have been at this for a long time in so-called alternative media. But that is independent media, hopefully brought to you by you. And we are brought to you by you, MediaMonarchy.com slash support. So we begin this episode with an update, a good news update, on last week's good news story about the right to repair as we move to this week's story. And I often hear from people, oh, you probably already heard this story. I probably haven't already heard this story. The news, as you may or may have not have noticed, has exploded in the 12 years I've been doing Media Monarchy. I used to have to dig a lot, and it required a lot of news alerts and RSS feeds to try and keep up with what was going on, and that's essentially impossible. But now you're my RSS feed. You guys keep me up with what's going on in the news. So no, our friend Mike in Philly on the tweets at AfixJS, you're not late to the party. We haven't talked about how India planted 66 million trees in just 12 hours, setting a Guinness Book World Record. Now, it actually did sound familiar to me, so I looked back in the archives on the site, and one year ago here on Good News Next Week, we actually talked about how India planted 50-some million trees in 24 hours. So now they've broken their own record of planting 66 million trees in 12 hours. So don't ever think for a second, oh, you probably heard this. I haven't probably heard it. We are learning from each other, and as our friend Richard Grove says, learning our way forward. Our friend Justin, down in what I always jokingly refer to as America's Wang, he's down in Florida fighting the good fight. And actually, we had and blew the chance to be the first to really bring you the story big time that Justin and his company, NatureBay.com, is fighting not only eBay, but also Houghton, Harcourt, and Mifflin, the book company, for the word nature. Justin's NatureBay.com. The idea is it's a site where like-minded organic growers and nice earthy handmade items can get together and it's a like-minded marketplace. He has been attacked pretty quickly and we've talked to Justin both privately and just private Skype conversations and we also interviewed with him on a forthcoming podcast series from NatureBay.com. He finally got some local news coverage down in Florida, WTSP.com. Talked to Justin with a lengthy like, three, four minute interview, and you can find that entire video, of course, in the show notes. Like everything we say and play, always included down in the show notes. But good on him, man. Getting the attention, going big and going strong is the way to kind of bring attention. And as you may or may not know, we live in a very knee jerk society. And if you can generate enough interest and enough sympathy for David going against the Goliaths, they might back down. So big ups to Justin and go check out naturebay.com. Farmers to turn farmers to, for hire turn backyards into vegetable patches. This story from our good buddy at Sean Cathcart. And again, all this news is brought to you by you using hashtag good news next week. Girl out of Chicago disappointed her parents when she didn't go away to a big expensive school. She turned into an organic farmer and her and her husband back in 2005, that's the same year I started Media Monarchy, they started basically farmer for hire. They get hired to garden in people's yards. Sometimes some of their clients say, eh, come once a week for about a year and I can learn how to do it myself. Other clients are totally rich people who have no interest in putting their hands in the dirt. They just want the beautiful lawns and work to be done. But it's not just lawns. They're growing food. 
Now, this story from the Associated Press is a funny one because then they go to Boston. Well, apparently the idea of people eating their own homegrown organic produce is really popular. Yeah, newsflash. They're all figuring out what we've been talking about here for years. So that's another awesome idea. And again, nothing that's copyrightable. It's the idea. It's the idea that, hey, I could drive people around and be a chauffeur service if I wanted to, or hey, I could share information online and files with people if I wanted to. Hey, I could build a little community fridge or any of those things that we've talked about here. You can be a farmer for hire. Love that idea. Our cover story this week, cheers. There is now probiotic beer. Apparently there's never been probiotic beer. You'd think even here in craft beer Oregon, somebody would have come up with that. But University of Singapore researchers were diving into this because apparently you can't really easily make probiotic beer because the parts that make the probiotics actually are inhibited by some of the hops. So they worked and worked because this guy basically believes in gut health and worked in Singapore at a university on creating a probiotic beer and they are patenting it. So we'll wait to see exactly if we all get to figure out how to make our own probiotic beer. And I wouldn't be surprised to learn from maybe people out there in the comments or in the chats that people are making this. They just haven't patented it yet. So again, we always want your comments and of course your likes and subscribes. That's what everybody has to say on YouTube videos and, and it's true. So that's pretty awesome, and that, that's good news. So beer, that's probiotic. If there's any bad downside, it's only 3.5% alcohol, but I'm sure people will work on innovating that as well. And this episode of Good News Next Week, again, I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com, giving you some solutions-oriented stories. It's got it all. It's got everything you want for summer. It's got beer, it's got weed, and it's got cats. So we move from the story about beer to stories about weed. Marijuana fans cheer as a recreational pot goes on sale in Nevada, and they are saying it might actually be bigger market than here in Oregon or in Washington or Colorado because of the massive, massive, massive tourism industry in Nevada. They say the lines were around the blocks there in Nevada. As again, Daddy government, gosh, thanks for letting us use plants the way we'd like to use them. <laughs> Again, anybody that has the power to give you something, of course, has the power to take it away as well. So we had the beer, we had the weed, and now let's have the cats. As Frankie's running around in here trying to catch some bugs, I'll tell you about a story from the Purrington Post out of Texas, where a <laughs> city council has voted to reinstate their library cat. So apparently someone complained about the library cat, the cat that lived in the library. And they got, again, deluged with comments online and social media, thousands of them. And they changed their mind and decided that the cat can stay in the library. And who complained? Just one dog person. So again, let that be a reminder. Sometimes it just does take one grumpy dog person to cause a bunch of problems and you realize, hey wait, there's thousands of people like me who maybe hadn't spoken up yet. Those are some of the ways that we are winning in solutions-oriented stories. We appreciate you submitting those stories using hashtag good news next week. And we appreciate you supporting our work, independent, non-commercial, alternative media. I give you the Morning Monarchy Morning News Show every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We do a daily DJ set we call Pump Up the Volume. We've got the weekly New World Next Week series. We've also got the Mary Jane Report and all the other segments we work on behind the scenes that, again, are brought to you by you at MediaMonarchy.com slash support. There it is. Good news next week, episode 50-something for the week of July 10th, 2017. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Again, thanking you for watching and listening and reminding you, as always, like Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedy said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.